Hey, Internet! It's Colorful Artie back for more Oracle of Ages Cursed. So, holy cow, I did not realize my first episode was a half hour of Alm. That came as a complete shock to me. I was expecting it to be like 20 minutes. I guess I talked to too many people. Well then. Got everything. Got the cursed ring equipped. Sweet. So if we go into the shop, we've got a few things for sale. Hearts, and then a Gasha Seed. Can't aff well, I can't afford the hearts, but I have no need for those. Alright. Let's go to the first dungeon, shall we? So remember how we passed this area at the very beginning of the game? The old graveyard is this way, and we can use the Ember Seeds to burn those trees away. Nothing we can do up there, because, well... We can't jump over pits yet. Uh-oh. Huh? This has a keyhole. Better find the key, then. And hey, it's a ghost. Boo! No way! It's too scary! It's pitch black inside that grave beneath the tree! Shut up! It's no good if you get scared! Besides... It might come out. The ghost. Well, alright then. Oh, I don't have a gasha seed to plant. That's a shame. Piece of heart behind that rock, but we can't do anything about that. Can we move any of these graves by any chance? Nope. Ooh. And here's the grave beneath the tree they were talking about. Ooh, skull, that's scary. And for some reason, lighting the torches make that fall down. I don't know why. We get the graveyard key! So now we can get into the first dungeon. Is there anything beneath this tree? Nope, just a rupee. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I love the overworld music in Seasons and Ages. At least in the present time. The past music is not terribly great. Now we can get in the graveyard. Hope we can learn how to swim soon, otherwise we can't get in there. Oh boy. These are gooeys. They're like the birds of the game. Hello! He looks happy to be dead. Alright, here we are, the first dungeon. Level 1, the Spirit's Grave. Also, you can't go forward at the start of the dungeon. Very interesting. And if you thought the Gnarled Root Dungeon from Seasons was easy, this is even easier. I do have the Curse Screen equipped, right? Yeah, okay. Those guys just really stink. Okay, here's one of the main puzzles of ages, this dice block you see here. You can push it, and it changes color depending on which way you push it. And the goal is to kind of get it the right color. So you can see these are blue. You want to get it blue side up. And that door opens. Naturally, not all of them are that easy. Take this bot. Get back here, Stalfos. Aw, oh, lame. Oh boy, these are Poe's. They take a lot of hits to kill, especially if you've got the curse drain on. And we get a small key, yay! Oh, this is an interesting room. We want to get that chest, so let's go down here. Ah, uh, shoot, we're gonna have to push the block again. To do that, we're gonna- ooh, yay! Another treasure chest! We get the dungeon map! Press select to see it! The darkened rooms are ones you haven't been to yet. As you can see, this dungeon looks like a nice little flame. Quite appropriate, wouldn't you say? Also, I feel like the dungeon music in Ages is kind of weaker than the ones in Seasons. 
And we get the compass. Use it to track your position, locate chests, and find keys. Also, some of you might not know, if you use an ember seed on this wall here, you can burn across and get in here. These crystals need the sword to be destroyed. And you remember these guys from Oracle of Seasons, right? They gave me a lot of trouble. Anyways, let's step on this. And we get a rain, get it appraised later. Or, in this, since we don't really have any use for other rains other than the cursed rain, we can just get money off of them. That little sound effect means there is a key in this room. It only makes that sound effect if you have the compass. The music is so weird in here. Very eerie. I like it. Take that keys. A lot of pots here. We can't move or destroy. They're basically like blocks, except at least you can push blocks. We're taking a little detour. Oh, that's an open chest. All right. So if we go over here, push that switch, we make the chest appear. Do the same thing on the other side. And then this switch makes a platform appear. That was not what I wanted to happen. But anyways, we can get another key if we open that. Thankfully, I don't think falling in pits makes you take extra damage if you've got the curse screen on. All right. Boom, bum, blum, bum, bum. Moving that block. A lot of very simple puzzles in this dungeon. Nice introductory dungeon. Yay, gacha seed. Know where I'm planting that. Jump a little earlier there. Yeah, so if we go up here, boss door, and wall masters are in this game a lot more than they were in Oracle of Seasons. Thankfully, floor masters are a bit rarer. Alright, mini boss time. The mini boss of this dungeon is Fat Poe. I don't think that's his official name. I don't know what his official name is. Ow. And okay, if they latch onto you, you can't use your sword. That's lovely. No, 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 darn it. First game over of the run. Uh, that is embarrassing. But yeah, you can see the Cursed Rain take a lot more damage. Spirit's Grave, you are creepy. And yes, it matters. First Dungeon, you are quite scary. Especially compared to the Naldru Dungeon. Well, it's a long trek back to the mini-boss. Because, of course, in Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, after you beat the mini-boss, you get a portal that teleports you to the mini-boss room. Needless to say, this makes dying to the mini-boss rather annoying. Hey, Fat Poe, time for a rematch. All right! Ember seeds are good against them. Oh, boo hoo. Alright, these small boo or the small pose are getting very annoying. There we go. And mini bosses drop a fairy, which gives you pretty much full hearts, unless you've got a ton of them. 
Hey, Boca Blends. Ooh, Boomerang Boca Blends. They're annoying. In your face. This is basically just a lot of button pushing and block pushing. Very easy first dungeon. Take that. Oh boy! This room looks familiar. This exact room was in Oracle of Seasons, except instead of getting the seed satchel at the end of it, we get the power bracelet! Hold the button and press the control pad to lift heavy objects. So as you can see, we're getting the dungeon items kind of a bit faster in Oracle of Ages. Like we get the power bracelet in the second dungeon in Oracle of Seasons, and the first dungeon in this. Of course, we don't get bombs for a while, but... Actually, we get bombs pretty soon after this dungeon, who am I kidding? Get another rain! Now here what we want to do is if we've got the power bracelet, it doesn't even need to be in our, like, inventory. As long as it's in our inventory, it doesn't even need to be equipped, we can now push pots around. Also, I love killing enemies with pots. And we get the boss key! So now instead of tricking all the way back, looky here, we're back to the first room, and we can just use the teleporter. So the first boss is very easy if you know what you're doing. If you just go in guns blazing, it's like, yeah, you'll beat the boss! If you're not wearing the cursed ring, you're gonna take a lot of damage, though. It's Pumpkin Head! So slash his body. Wow, I've actually never seen him do that. Now lift the pumpkin up and throw it off. Get out of the way of this guy, because he can damage you by charging through. So you just basically sidestep and... Wow, okay, pumpkin head's powerful. Wow, I died to pumpkin head. Two game overs in the first dungeon. Woot! Gotta love that. Thank goodness our sword has such long reach, unlike Link to the Past. Yeah, as you can see, if you get in the range of that little ghost, you're gonna die. If you got the Cursed Rain. If you don't have the Cursed Rain, by all means, just slash the heck out of him as long as you got full HP. Oh! I only had free hearts. That probably explains why I sucked so bad on that time. And, you know, I sucked, so... There's that. So it looks like it's time for the charge swipes. Hold the A button down and you'll deal a more powerful charge swipe. He can do that? I have- okay, I've never seen like any of these pumpkin head moves. I always kill him too quickly on a non-cursed playthrough. I have played for this game cursed, once, but it was a long time ago. So... I'm very rusty. On a cursed playthrough, avoiding damage is far more important than dealing damage. So I'm gonna try playing it very safe. So much for that. I hate you, pumpkin head. Alright. New plan. After he takes two main hits, we're switching to the shield. Cause actually the shield might not be able to defend against fireballs. I'll have to check that. I know the iron shield can.
Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna switch there preemptively, just in case he tries something funny. Ow. You jerk. I don't like how fast he is. Man, he takes a lot to bring down on a cursed playthrough. Could this be it? Yeah! Never thought I'd be so happy to be Pumpkinhead, but yeah, there we, there we go. No heart container for me! You got the eternal spirit, an essence of time. Even after life ends, it speaks across time to the heart. And we beat the dungeon. We got the thing we need to beat the game, and we defeated Pumpkinhead! Pumpkinhead is not that hard on a normal playthrough. It's me, the Meku Tree! I hear an essence echoing in the western woods. Can you go there? I can! In the next episode! Thanks for watching, I'm Colorful Artie, and I hope to see you next time. Have a great day, and God bless!